Well, hi, and welcome back. Taking a look today at an alternate version of exercise 5 13 on page 258 from chapter 5, Reporting and Analyzing Inventories. This is going to take a look at the inventory turnover and day sales inventory concept. So it says use the following information for Palmer Company to compute inventory turnover for 2016 and 2015 and its day sales and inventory at December 31st, 2016 and 2015. And then comment on Palmer's efficiency in using its assets to increase sales from 2015 to 2016. So the table shows us the data to solve the, the problem. We have cost of goods sold for each of the three years and ending inventory for each of the three years as well. Part one is to use the above information to compute inventory turnover for 2015 and its day's sales in inventory at December 31st, 2015. So to solve this, we're going to first calculate what the company's inventory turnover is. And inventory turnover is essentially just how many times throughout the period or the year in this case is the company flipping its inventory. Uh, the more times the company can flip its inventory, that means the more inventory it's selling. So typically that's a good thing for companies. When inventory isn't selling very well, it's not flipping very well. Uh, certain industries have inventory that just flips constantly, like uh, grocery stores. Their inventory is constantly turning over. But uh, other businesses like car dealerships, their inventory moves a little slower. So there are certain industry standards that we can also compare to get a better flavor for what this inventory turnover means for this particular company. But for right now, inventory turnover is calculated very simply by taking the company's cost of goods sold and we'll divide that by the company's average inventory. Now that average inventory is the inventory from the beginning of the period plus the inventory at the end of the period divided by two comes up with the average. Uh, inventory balances change throughout a period, so we're trying to kind of smooth out the fluctuations from the highs and the lows just to know, well, on average, what was the inventory balance like during this entire period. Cost of goods sold, <clears throat> that's a cumulative number for the entire period, so it's appropriate to compare that, compu uh, that cumulative number for the entire period over what the average inventory balance was for that entire comparative period. So here we're going to take for the first period the 351650 for 2015 cost of goods sold and we're going to divide that by the average ending inventory balance of 96625. And that 96625 that's just taking this year's ending number of 94250 plus last year's ending number of 99,000. Remember last year we ended the year 2014 on December 31st at midnight with $99,000 of inventory. <laughs> well that becomes the starting inventory for January the 1st, the first second of January the 1st 2015. How much inventory do we start out with? 99,000. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the beginning inventory which is last year's ending plus this year's ending Add them together, divided by two, and voila, what do we have? Average of 96,625. So divide it into the cost of goods sold, and it tells us about how many times throughout the period inventory flipped over. How many times throughout the year did they clear out all their inventory and buy more and clear out and buy more, essentially? Well, in this case, it happened about 3.6 times. They turned over inventory about 3.6 times. So throughout the year, they bought about 3.6 times the average balance of inventory, 96,625. Okay, well that's interesting, but more specifically, we might want to know, well, how long has this inventory been on the shelves? The longer that inventory sits on the shelves for a lot of companies, the less desirable it becomes, the, desirable it becomes, the less saleable it becomes. So it kind of starts losing quality. To figure out that number, that inventory days or day sales at inventory, we're going to take the ending inventory divided by cost of goods sold times 365. So the ending inventory here was 94,250 divided by cost of goods sold of 351,650. Multiply the times 365, and inventory was sitting on the shelves about 97.8 days. So 
if this was the inventory for a grocery store, would you want to buy groceries from this grocer who had stuff sitting on the shelves for well over three months? Probably not. So that number becomes more significant when we compare it to some standards for the industry that that company serves in. Another way that you can do this, the days uh, sales and inventory, is to take the number of days in the year divided by the number of inventory turnover times, the 3.6, and it'll generally come out to about the same. It's different here because this 3.6 was actually carried out to about 9 or 10 decimal places, and the average is actually carried out a little bit further too. But for very simplistic problems, and most of the times in industries, they just take the number of days in the year, divide the flip into that, and that comes to the days, sales, and inventory. Okay, so let's take a look at the next part for 2016. It's the exact same type of calculation. Inventory turnover, cost of goods sold, divided by the average. So we have 568, 825. This time we're averaging these two numbers, 103,900 plus 94,250 divided by two. What does that equal? 99,075. To get the flip of the number of times inventory is turned over, well, it's improved, right? It's flipping more frequently, 5.7 times. Uh, if this hadn't been rounded out to 5.7, and if the Im average inventory hadn't been rounded out, we could have just taken, to get the day's sales, we could have taken 365 divided by that flip, but here they're rounding things out, so we really can't come up with the exact same number that way. So let's just do it the longer way. Take the ending inventory divided by cost of goods sold times 365. So we have 103,900 divided by 568,825 times 365. And ah, things have improved quite a bit. Now inventory is only on the shelves for 66.7 days. So if it was a grocery store, you may still not want to buy from this grocery store, but the grocery store management can take comfort in that you know things are getting better. They're becoming more efficient at managing their inventory, maybe getting things in more that customers want and getting rid of some old stuff, marking it down just to get rid of it. So then to comment on the efficiency, we think that, see that things are really proving. Uh, inventory was sitting on the shelves about, oh, pretty close to 98 days in 2015. Now it's sitting on the shelves just about 67 days. If the industry average is 100 days, how would you feel about this company's management on how they're handling their inventory? Well, if the industry average is 100 and these guys are going from 97 to 67, well then they're doing pretty well. Their inventory is probably some high quality inventory. If the industry average is 30, well these guys have made an improvement, but man, their inventory is still not selling very well at all. So those are some quick comments on Palmer's efficiency in using inventory for its sales.